Another beautiful day in Utah. Joe and I are pretty excited this morning. We're going to jump over these mountains and intercept Bob flying his Risen 915. Well, we're only about 12 miles northeast of Salt Lake City, and we've picked up Bob with the help of ADSB. And before we even get close, the first thing you'll notice, this Risen is not a slow airplane, even though it's classified as an ultralight in Europe. In fact, when we first spotted Bob out here, he was up at 11,000 feet doing about 180 in an orbit waiting for us. We asked him to slow down and drop 3,000 feet and go into a turn. We thought it'd be embarrassing if we ran our rockets out of gas trying to catch an ultralight. So the Risen's a pretty new airplane. It came out in about 2015. I think there's only a couple here in the U.S. where they're considered experimental. You can see the flap tracks there on each wing. When we get on the ground, we'll show you it's got some huge uh, Fowler flaps. Right behind the canopy there on the upper fuselage, you can just barely see it where the uh, ballistic parachute's at. Supposedly, uh, you can deploy that up to 175 miles an hour and it doesn't destroy the airframe like it does on some aircraft. Pretty sleek little airplane. All carbon fiber, V-tail, retractable gear. Weighs less than my motorcycle, Honda Goldwing. Bob's here comes in at 855 pounds empty, 1377 pounds gross. Earlier ones with the 912, they were a couple hundred pounds lighter. 22 feet long, 27 foot wingspan, about 15 gallons in each wing. Bob let me fly his plane here a while back. With that four foot wide roomy cockpit and that great visibility, it was a real pleasure to fly. I did notice on takeoff and landing, you can notice how light the airplane is. Well, Joe and I are going to split off and head back to the airport. We'll meet up with Bob on the ground and take a closer look at his airplane. Friends Airfield. Kind of fun to hug the hillside here as we cross this last mountain. That's Bountiful Utah coming up on the nose out there. Once we get closer to town, we'll make a left turn, arc around to the south, and come up initial runway 35. Guy Park, Rocket 91 Whiskey, flatted two, four miles southeast of the field, arcing around initial runway 35. Sky Park. Sky Park, Rocket 91 Whiskey, flatted two, turning initial runway 35. We'll be breaking over the numbers. Sky Park. Sky Park, Rocket 91, Whiskey, leads in the break over the numbers. Well, I finally caught up with Bob over at his hangar so we can take a closer look at his Risen 915. Well, let's do a quick walk around and then we'll push it back in the hangar and Bob will tell us all about his Risen 915. Big rain shower is just about to roll overhead.
If his plane looks a little different from when we were flying next to him the other day, it's because he just changed out his stripes and he got his new tail number. Kind of cool. Colors change depending on what angle you're viewing it from. It sure does look cool from the back here, too. You can see where the uh, ballistic chute is. Bob's going to demonstrate how to get in. <laughs> Watch this. Those <laughs> you know, famous last words. Just like that. What kind of equipment you got? So to... this 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 is a, obviously a Garmin equipped airplane, dual G3X touches. Nice. For navigators, I have the GTN 650XI and uh, the GNX 375 along with the the autopilot uh, the garmin autopilot i think it's the 570 i believe 570 or 507 uh, 507 yeah there you go um so it's it's it, with a with the garmin yaw dampener so it's capable of flying lpv approaches uh um or a little localizer nav based if you want to go that route although nobody does anymore huh. um, this airplane is kind of unique in terms of it has a single power lever that controls the engine and the prop so depending on what throttle position i've got it will change the pitch of the prop for its most efficient angle so basically you fly this thing a little bit like a jet because you don't worry about a prop control it's all automatic mm -hmm. um, same with mixture you were saying and right? mixture is automatic it's a it's a fully up it's fully digitized uh, fadec um, so you, you really can't harm the engine because it's got overboost protection for, for, for the turbocharger. It's obviously injected. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is auto throttle, but I think for this airplane that'd be kind of nutty anyway. You could weight it down with a lot yeah. of stuff. It has the GS, it has the, uh, the Garmin uh, Shield mount AOA. And let's see, can I get this thing alive? Yeah, there you go. I'd like to put AOA on my planes. <laughs> And you've got electric prop on this, right? Electric, well, uh, no, it's a, it's, a, it's it's a it's a variable hydraulic prop that's electrically controlled. Oh. So it's a hydraulic prop, just like a standard issue, but the prop governor is actually connected to a single lever power control module that, like I say, variably it, it varies the pitch of the blade based on the throttle angle and uh, the ambient temperature outside, and the you know the and the power you're requesting. So. If I'm full power, it's going to go more towards a flat pitch. Um, if I'm at a low power setting, it's going to go more towards a, uh, a coarse pitch or towards feather. And if we were to lose it, the engine altogether, it would go almost all the way to feather. Huh, yeah. Oh, by the way, you said you had that uh, smart glide in here too, right? Right, so this, this button right here is the smart glide button. So on that unfortunate afternoon when I grab my chest, uh, all my wife has to do is... Uh, it's got, we got to be at 170 knots or less. Assuming the engine has died, she hits the smart glide button and the, 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 the airplane in coordination with the Garmin avionics suite will find the nearest suitable airport. In this case, it's got to be 3000 feet or longer for me. And then, uh, you know, it'll, it'll glide to that airport at the best glide speed, which in this case is 92 knots. So when she gets over an airport, uh, all she's got to do at that point is, is hit the ballistic parachute right here and uh, it should get her to the ground very nicely so you know every time I come over here and look at this I start we'll kind of want one this has a I, one aftermarket mod I did was the uh, the urethra um, oxygen system oh that's right and it's fully automated um, it works in conjunction with the iPad here so I can see what my oxygen level is, uh, what my pulse rate is. I can see what my oxygen bottle content is. 
and it will meter it'll meter the oxygen in very precise increments based on my respiration so huh. it's it, it's extremely efficient and allows me to operate this airplane in the mid to high teens where you can really see some high true air speeds so if I had to get this airplane up into the 15, 16, 17,000 foot range, you'll see about 225, 230 knots. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it's got power flaps and maximum, maximum extension is around 38 degrees and I'll show you how this works. That allows a stall speed of about 43 knots. Um, when Chris and I flew this airplane, we were actually seeing in the high 30s for actual stall break. So it's a very, very docile, slow stalling airplane. It's a lot of flat. It's a lot of flat. And it allows you to get into very short fields if you need to. Again, the airplane is, uh, is fully carbon fiber, dual carbon fiber spars. Uh, with uh, 30 gallons of fuel, which doesn't sound like much, but you know, at, at around 195 knots true, I'm doing about, uh, at 65% power, I'm doing about six and a half gallons an hour. Well, for a lot of people, if you're like Bob and I, you're tired and just you and your wife and the dog, you like to travel and you want to get there fast but not spend a fortune on fuel, this might just be the ticket. Thanks for coming along. See you next time.